Welcome to Global Perspectives. Today we want to frame the question, why can't you see what we see? Discovering with a lot of leadership, there's two primary issues with leadership. One is just objectivity about who you are, why you do what you do, what the outcomes see, what other people notice in interacting with you. Which leads us to the second key, and that is self-awareness. I'm being interviewed pretty consistently uh, in these last two years about the transitions of leadership as an organizational consultant, church consultant, etc. I'm being asked, what are the transitions like? What's different than it was five or 10 or 20 years ago? I said, it used to be oh, I always had to work with, how do you do conflict? Community conflict, how do you do organizational? How do you create common language for it? I said, those days are gone. The key question now is with our leadership, what's the issue of self-awareness? Matter of fact, yesterday I was interviewed by a seasoned leader, he's in his late seventies. And he said, Martin, what's the greatest change you've noticed in leadership and leadership development over the last 25 years? And I said, this idea of self-awareness. And he said, you've got to talk to me about this because people my age aren't necessarily understanding this. We're seeing something, but we wouldn't frame it that way. And so I want to talk to you about self-awareness, but particularly, why can't you see what we see? A number of years ago, when I would preach in larger churches or speak in larger um, seminar contexts, particularly in an urban core with culturally diverse crowds, I would make sure I had a giant mirror in the front of the auditorium. And when I was done speaking with one of the particular talks, I would say, as you're leaving today or as you're sitting to reflect or before you go to lunch or dinner, just walk up to the front a big mirror we've got very large uh, people holding this and say just look you can take a quick look and walk away you can stand and stare for a little bit what do you see what don't you see well when I first started doing this I sent one of my assistants to get one well she thought it would be ideal if she picked up some sort of um, nice designer mirror that was distressed white wood. And I said, no, 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 this isn't for a bathroom. I said, um, probably we're looking at something like a hardware store. And she goes, Pottery Barn? I said, sure, get me the biggest wood frame you can find. So we got one. I have used these for almost two decades now. When I started Global Leadership and pulled Global Associates, we began to do this with each other when we'd go away for a week together at some place night, nice a resort retreat, usually someplace warm. We would spend time together and we would hold up the mirror to each other. We would ask one question, the same question, but with two tones. Why can't you see what we see? One was a validating, affirming one. Come on, what? why can't you see what we see? The other one was the other side. Why is this stuff still in your life? Why can't you see what we see? Same question, two tones. After Diana passed, I thought, I need good friends. I need friends to ask me questions. I need friends to help me get back focused and not move, not move on, but move ahead. I still had a life purpose. I was still in my 50s. I thought, I still got plenty of life and fire. I need to get refocused. And I'd say to my friends, let's do the mirror. And they would say, you're not ready yet. So I would set a little longer and I'd go, I'm ready for the mirror. And they go, no, you're not. They made me wait 19 months. So it may not be the time for you to do it today or even at this season of your life. But may you have some good perspective, both personally and with the people around you that will say when it's time, why can't you see what we see? Hopefully it'll be a validating tone and they'll help you see it. But if not, may you have courageous friends who go, Ooh, why aren't you seeing what we see? Why can't you see what we see? Earlier, I mentioned a young female leader who had gone through some pretty tough things in life. She was completing a master's degree. I knew people would want to hire her, but the interview process was going to be hard because she couldn't see 
She knew she was doing well, but she couldn't see how good she had become. So I said, we're going to hire a photographer to follow you around for an entire day. They're going to come to your apartment. They're going to see you finishing getting ready. They're going to get pictures of your apartment. They're going to see you when you leave, when you get into your car, that you will soon upgrade and get something new as soon as you have money coming in. Um, they're going to see you interact with some of your classmates in grad school. They're going to watch you go pick up coffee at your favorite coffee shop. They're going to show, they're going to shoot what would used to be several rolls of film, now endless digital photos. Then, with a wardrobe change, uh, you're going to head up to a place north called Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain is a unique place. It's a, it is that. It's a, it's a mountain. When you go to the top, um, there's a place where you can see where the Catskill Mountains begin to unfold in range. It's beautiful. I said, you're a hiker. Dress accordingly, you'll be hiking. They're going to take pictures of you. You're going to, they're going to get pictures of you looking at the mountain ranges unfold. Then you're going to come and do another wardrobe change. And you're going to go into Midtown Manhattan. You're a professional. You're going to work in one of the major cities of the world. You're probably going to influence what other people do in major cities of the world. They're going to get photos of you in Times Square and in Midtown. You're going to dress differently. You're going to look differently. You're going to handle yourself differently than when you're in hiking boots and shorts at Bear Mountain. And then you're going to take a couple of days to look through all the photos. They're all you. And then you're going to ask the question, how can I see what other people see? Because right now you can't see it. I've got to tell you, coming out of grad school, she got a really great hire. There was a quick transition. And within 14 months, she was the director, the top level person in her organization. She had just turned 30 years old. She's talked about those photos, what they've done for her, how she saw herself differently. It doesn't just happen when you're coming out of grad school. It doesn't happen when you're 29 going on 30 and you need perspective. It happens at various stages of a leader's life. It's about self-awareness. It's about perspective. It's about the question, why can't you see what we see? What you have to identify is which tone do you need at this stage of your development? Do you need the validating one? Come on, why can't you see what we see? Or is it time for somebody with a voice like this who will look into your soul and go, come on, me, why can't you see what we see? Time to hold up the mirror and ask the question, what am I seeing? And why can't I see what others are seeing? It's a good season to do it.